Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to talk about today uh, relates a little bit to North Face, which we talked about last time. Okay. All right. So let's recall that the null space uh, of a matrix A, which we denoted as N of A, it was defined to be the set of all solutions uh, to the equation AX equals zero. Okay. All right, so then uh, let's say that we have uh, an equation AX equals B. Uh, but where the B is not equal to zero, okay? So I wanna talk about what the solutions to this equation will look like. Okay. And so it turns out that the uh, solution, or maybe the solutions, if it's uh, more than one solution, They have a particular form to them. Uh, so let's write it like this. So the solutions to AX equals B also can be expressed. Uh, in the form uh, AX, or oh, not AX, just X equals uh, XP plus XN. So you guys have a homework question that kind of refers to this. So what the XP stands for, the P stands for particular. So the idea here is that XP is one particular solution. Uh, to the equation AX equals B. And then over here, this XN term, the N basically stands for null space. So this refers to the solution, the solutions, uh, oops, uh, to AX equals zero. So these are our vectors in the null space. And the idea of this form of the solution, so if XP is a particular solution to AX equals B, and then XN is in the null space, so it satisfies AX equals zero, then when we multiply A times X, with X having the form of a particular solution plus something in the null space, so if we distribute the A into the, inside the parentheses to each uh, X. Okay. Then here, since XP was a solution to AX equals B, that means AXP would be equal to zero. Oh, sorry, it would be equal to B. Whereas in contrast, XN being in the null space of A, uh, A times XN would be equal to zero. So hence we see that uh, this vector X, which is a particular uh, solution plus something in the null space, also satisfies AX equals B, meaning that uh, X would be another solution to this equation. And it turns out that every solution to this equation 
uh, can be written in this form where it's gonna be one particular solution plus something in your null space, okay? And so if you wanna find the complete solution to uh, an equation of the form AX equals B, and let's say you wanna express your solution in this particular form, uh, well, there's nothing special that you really have to do for that. Uh, it kind of just comes out naturally when you're solving the uh, equation. So I'm gonna try to illustrate that uh, just with an example of how it would work. So let's say we're given this matrix A. And then we're given a vector B. And we're gonna find the a complete solution to AX equals B. And we're gonna write the solution in the form X equals a particular solution and then plus a solution to the uh, AX equals zero equation, okay. So in order to find us the solutions to this equation, we'll do it the way that we usually do, which is we're gonna set up the augmented matrix for this um, equation. So we have A, I'm gonna augment it with B. And then we're gonna start doing elimination to try to find these solutions. Okay. So let's see what would we do here. Let's do row three, sorry, row two first. Minus three of row one. We can do row three plus two of row one. And let's do row four minus one of row one. That will eliminate everything in the first column underneath our pivot. Yeah. When we do these operations, so let's do row two minus three row one. So six minus six will be zero. One minus zero is one. Uh, four minus six, negative two. Negative two plus three is positive one. Uh, next, doing row three plus two, row one, negative four plus four is zero. Uh, one plus zero, negative six plus four. And three minus two. And then finally doing row four minus row one is two minus two. Uh, three minus zero negative four minus two, and two plus one, okay. So let's see here, so uh, this was our first pivot that we used for the elimination. So then to get our next pivot, if we go down and towards the right, here's gonna be the first or the next pivot then, okay. So then I'm gonna use this pivot to eliminate everything underneath it. So let's do row three minus row two, and let's do row four minus three row two. Okay. All right, now let's see, if we do row three minus row two, it will be zero and zero. If we do row four minus three row two, negative six plus six, so zero, and three minus three, zero. Okay. 
All right, so then here we've uh, reduced as much as possible. Uh, we had uh, no more pivots uh, after the second one. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is um, at this point, once you've reduced it to, this is uh, actually a reduced row echelon form. Uh, but once you produce to a row echelon form or reduce row echelon form, uh, what you want to do is you want to convert this back to a system of equations. So in this first row, uh, that reads as an equation 1x1 plus 2x2 plus 0x3 plus 2x4 equal to negative 1. The second row reads as uh, 1x3 minus 2x4 equal to positive 1. And then the other rows just give us the equation 0 equals 0, so they're not worth writing down. Okay. So here we have two equations, so we're only going to solve for two of our variables. And then going back to the reduced matrix, we see that um, columns 2 and 4 do not have a pivot in them. So because columns two and four have no pivot, uh, we can choose x2 and x4 to be our free variables. Okay. And if you'll recall, uh, the way that I approach um, these situations is I assign a parameter to each of the free variables. So since x2 and x4 can be anything, I'm just going to assign like a variable to each of them. I'll use s and t. And then what I want to do is I want to solve for the remaining variables x1 and x3. Okay. So if we substitute t in for x4, and then we solve for x3, x3 will be 1 plus 2t. And then again, substituting s and t for x2 and x4. We can also solve for x1. So x1 would be negative 1 minus 2s minus 2t. Okay. And then I'm going to write those four equations. Going to rewrite them in vector notation. So I'm going to put all the x's in one vector. And then here on the right hand side, I'm going to take what we have for the solution. I'm going to split it up into three terms. Okay. So in this first vector, I'm going to just write down all the constant terms in the solution, which would be the negative 1, 0, 1, 0. For the uh, vector over here that's multiplied by s, I'm just going to take all the coefficients of s, so negative 2, 1, 0, 0. And for the last vector, we take all the coefficients of t, so negative 2. 0, 2, 1. Okay. And then here, uh, s and t can be any real number since x2 and x4 are free. So we can maybe leave a comment like that s and t, just any real number. Now, when I write the solution in this form, okay, so the idea is we get uh, one solution for each possible uh, combination of s and t. Uh, so in particular, if s and t are 0, then we get this one vector by itself as one particular solution to the equation. So this vector here, this is like our xp. Okay, it's our particular solution. And then uh, this portion over here with the parameters uh, in it, s and t, uh, this portion corresponds to our 
uh, Xn, okay? So this would actually represent like the um, complete solution to Ax equals zero. So this would kind of be like representing the null space of matrix A. Okay. And then here we kind of see how the solution to Ax equals B when B is non-zero. And uh, kind of naturally has this form of a particular solution and plus something that was in the null space, okay? All right, so that's how you find the complete solution to Ax equals B uh, in the form of a particular solution plus something in the null space. It kind of just happens naturally, in my opinion, as you just go about solving the equation, all right? All right, so uh, let's move on to a new topic. I want to uh, start talking about the column space next. I kind of hoped that I would be able to touch on it last time, but uh, not even close, but I will talk about it today. So let's say we have a matrix A Uh, it could be any size n by n matrix. So the column space of A which we denote by uh, C of A. So the column space of A is defined to be the span of the columns of A, okay? So for instance, if I just create a random matrix on the spot, okay. So for this matrix A, it's column space, would be the span of the two vectors, one, two, one, and three, negative two, four. So the span of the columns of A, okay? So in this case, uh, here are the columns of A were two vectors in R3, because they have three components in them. Uh, you can see that these vectors are not collinear, so they're linearly independent. So therefore, they would be oriented something like this. So therefore, their span would be like a plane uh, that's uh, inside of R3. All right, and uh, we've talked about span uh, a couple of times this semester and I went over span last time. <clears throat> so remember that the span of a collection of vectors was the set of all linear combinations of those vectors. And I talked about last time how the span of a set of vectors is always a subspace So in this case, uh, we could say the column space of A is a subspace and or subspace of R3. Okay. Okay. And so it ends up being a subspace of R3 just because these vectors were in R3 to start with. And so the number of components in each of the column vectors is given by the number of rows of A. So because this matrix A has three rows, uh, that's why each of its columns has three components. Okay. So in general, if A is size M by N, 
each column would have n components in it. So generally speaking, the column space of a matrix A will be a subspace of R n, uh, n being the number of rows of A, okay? Now, uh, here, although I define the column space as the span of the columns of A, uh, this may be another uh, more useful way of thinking about the column space as well. So I want to touch on that next. So we need to recall something about uh, matrix vector multiplication. So remember that when you take a matrix A and you multiply it by a vector X, uh, that product results in a linear combination of the columns of A. Okay. Uh, that's kind of how matrix vector multiplication was defined. But in case you guys don't recall this or aren't familiar with it, I'll just illustrate with a small example. So let's say we have this two by two matrix A and let's say we want to multiply it with the vector X. So if you guys will remember, we defined matrix multiplication so that this product was equal to x1 times the first column of A and plus x2 times the second column of A. Yeah. And here we could actually like uh, add this up. It will give us um, like AX1 plus BX2 as the first component. And then you'll get CX1 plus DX2 for the second component. Okay. And so uh, usually when we multiply matrices together, we use like the row dot product column method. So if you just computed each entry directly, you would have gotten AX1 plus BX2, which agrees with our first component here. And you've gotten CX1 plus DX2 for the second component. Okay. So you can see that this is equivalent to maybe how you've been multiplying uh, matrices. Uh, so you may have forgotten uh, originally though that uh, we defined matrix multi vector multiplication. Uh, as like forming a combination of the columns of A like this, okay? Okay, so like uh, what does that mean in the context of the column space of a matrix? Yeah. Okay, so uh, if we have um, Here. Okay, so yeah, let's maybe rephrase it like this. So, when we look at the equation AX equals B, okay, this equation will only have a solution uh, if and only if. Uh, B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Okay. So just reason being is because we already talked about how AX, that product results in a linear combination of the columns of A. So for B to be equal to AX uh, for some X would mean that B itself must be a linear combination of the columns of A, okay? So that's why we can say this equation will have a solution only when B is a combination of the columns of A. Now to say that B is a combination of the columns of A, that 
just means it was in the span of the columns, meaning uh, just saying that B is in the column space of A then. So we can kind of rephrase this by saying that the equation AX equals B will have a solution uh, if and only if uh, B is in the column space of matrix A. Okay. So that's kind of another way of thinking about the column space. Column space represents uh, all the vectors B for which the equation AX equals B has a solution. Okay. So I'm going to do just a couple of examples. Uh, <clears throat> So the first example here, I'm, I don't think I'm going to work through it, but I just kind of want to highlight something with this first example. Yeah. All right, so let's consider uh, this question here. So we want to know is the vector uh, let's say 1, 1, negative 3, negative 2. Let's say, is this vector a linear combination? Okay. Uh, the vector is 1, 0, negative 1, 0. to one, negative one, zero, and zero, negative two, one, two. This is a type of question that uh, you've seen before this semester. And here, what I want to do with this example, I just want to show you the different ways that we could have asked the exact same question but like using different words, different terminology. So, this, so to say that this vector is a linear combination of these three vectors, uh, that's equivalent to asking if this vector in the span of these three given vectors here. Because remember, the span of a collection of vectors was the set of all linear combinations of them. So when we're asking if this vector is a linear combination of these three, that question is exactly the same as uh, asking if that vector was in the span of the three given vectors. Okay. So these two questions, they're worded differently, but they're asking the exact same thing. Okay. Now, if I take these three given vectors, and if I were to put them into a matrix A, whoops, all right. So then we made these vectors the columns of A here. So then, uh, by definition of the column space, the span of these three vectors would be equal to the column space of matrix A. Because okay, by definition, column space of A is the span of its columns, which is just these three vectors. So then this question here uh, could also be rephrased as asking, you know, is this vector 1, 1, negative 3, negative 2? in the column space of this matrix A. So again, this is the exact same question. It's just worded differently. Now it's um, phrased in terms of the column space of a matrix. And then just kind of a uh, and that of what we talked about over here, OK? 
So for a vector to be in the column space of A, there must be a solution to this equation AX equals B. So asking if this vector is in the column space of A, that's the same as asking, uh, is there a solution uh, to the equation AX equals B, where B is uh, this vector of 1, 1, negative 3, negative 2. So asking, is there a solution to the equation A, where this is A, X equals B, the vector being B? Okay. So this question is also the exact same question as these three questions up here, okay? So for all four of these questions, the way you would essentially answer the problem is to just uh, set up the augmented matrix with A, augment it with B. And then you'd go about doing uh, elimination uh, to try to find the solutions to see if the solutions exist or not, okay? So I think I'm not gonna work that out. Uh, we've already kind of done that in the first example with a different A and B. Yeah. But I just wanted to highlight like a how you guys want to be familiar with uh, all the words, the definitions that have been introduced in this class. You kind of want to know how uh, these uh, concepts kind of relate to one another. Because here you see that um, the same question can be asked in many different ways. And if you didn't know any better, you might not realize that these four questions were all the exact same question that they would all be solved in the exact same way, therefore. Okay. Uh, but if you kind of do understand the definitions and uh, are kind of able to make these connections, it's maybe easier to look at a question and to actually understand what the question is asking you to do. All right. Okay. So yeah, be sure you, when a new definition is introduced that you're taking the time to at least you know, know the definition, have it memorized, and, you know, try to maybe understand what the definition is as well, okay? All right, but let's uh, do some actual examples where, like, you know, we'll actually work through them. Uh, just involving column space, let's see here. Okay. So here I'm going to create a new matrix for this uh, next example. Okay. All right, so I've got a three by three matrix A here. And we want to find, uh, let's see here, well, so we want to find a condition on vector B uh, to be in the column space of this matrix. So this is um, a question that I think was in your last homework assignment. You had a question kind of like this. So really the question is just asking us to find like what vectors B are in the column space of A. Okay. And so the way that we want to answer this question in particular, because there's maybe different ways you could think of answering it, but um, I think uh, the best way perhaps to answer it, or at least maybe what I think your professors would have desired in this type of question. 
So we just talked about how for B to be in the column space of A, there must be a solution to the equation AX equals B. So this question is really the same as asking uh, what conditions on B are necessary for there to be a solution to AX equals B. Okay. And so here, when it's asking for a condition on B for B to be in the column space, uh, that might seem like a like an abstract question that you might have difficulty wrapping your head around. But knowing that for B to be in the column space is the same as saying that uh, AX equals B has a solution, uh, we can rewrite the question as you know find a condition on B so that AX equals B has a solution. And then that question is maybe easier to uh, wrap your head around because you already know how to take an equation of the form AX equals B and you already know how to solve it. Okay. So that's gonna be the strategy for this problem is we're gonna uh, try to solve the equation AX equals B by setting up an augmented matrix. Here I'm leaving the right hand side just as an arbitrary B. Okay. And then we're just gonna start doing elimination to try to see what the solutions might look like if there are any. So uh, we would need to eliminate this negative two. So let's do row two plus two row one. Oh, sorry, that's not right. Uh, so when we do row two plus two, row one, we'll get zero. One plus zero is one. Zero plus four is four. And we'll get B2 plus two, B1. Yeah. So let's say if we were to do uh, another elimination step to try to get it at least to upper triangular form. So we need to eliminate this two using our next pivot. So we would do row three minus two, row two. And here one minus eight is negative seven. And we'll get B3 minus two times everything here. I'm just gonna write it uh, like that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we've reduced it to upper triangular form. So if we wanted to uh, try to solve the equation now, you know, we could rewrite this as a system of equations. And then what we could do is in this last equation, we could solve for x3 by dividing both sides of this last equation by negative seven. Once we solve for x3, we could back substitute and solve for x2, and then back substitute again to solve for x1 as well, okay? So here we are able to solve for x1, x2, x3, uh, no matter what the uh, right-hand side is. So it doesn't matter what we have here, uh, we would be able to solve for x3 and back substitute to get x1 and x2. So what we see here then is, um, the equation AX equals B always has a solution. Uh, no matter uh, the vector B that we have on the right-hand side. So 
So what that means is that there is no condition that vector B has to satisfy to be in the column space of A. Okay. Uh, because uh, it doesn't matter uh, what the components of B were, uh, we're seeing that there's always a solution. So therefore, uh, every vector in R3 would be in the column space of A. Or in other words, in this example, we could say the column space of A was equal to R3. So column space of A in this example is R3 because for every vector B in R3, uh, the equation AX equals B has a solution. All right. So let's take a look at an example where uh, there would be some condition on B for it to be in the column space of our matrix. Uh, so let's take, let's see here. All right, so let's take this next matrix. Let's scroll down a bit. So here's another matrix now. And we're kind of going to do the same thing as we did in the last example. We want to try to find what the column space of this matrix A looks like by finding a condition on a vector B uh, to be in the column space of A. So we want to find a condition on B so that uh, B is in the column space of this matrix A. And as we discussed in the last example, that's equivalent to asking for a condition on B. So that AX equals B has a solution. So therefore, we uh, just want to take the equation AX equals B and start trying to solve it by doing elimination. So it's exactly as we did in the last example. There's A, we're going to augment it with just a generic B. And we'll start doing elimination. So we're going to just uh, eliminate um, everything in the first column. So we'll have to do row three minus two, row one, and row four minus row one. OK. So then when we do row three minus two of row one, this will be four. Uh, four again, three. We'll get B3 minus two B1. And then row four minus row one, this will be five here. Eight, negative two. Oh, wait a second. Uh... 
Okay, yeah. Uh, I just want to confirm that I copied my question down correctly because uh, I had to change this question and I thought I might have uh, copied the wrong version down. Okay. Uh, here we're going to do row four minus row one. So B four minus B one. Okay. <clears throat> So then I want to do a little bit more illumination. So here's our next pivot. And I want to, at the very least, eliminate everything underneath it, kind of going for like a sort of upper triangular form. So we can do row three minus four, row two, and row four minus five, row two. Then when we do row three minus four, row two, four minus eight, three minus four, whoops, this minus four B2. Okay. And then here we're doing row four minus five of row two, so eight minus 10. Uh, negative two minus five. Hmm. Well, let's see here. I guess this example didn't work the way that I thought it would. Maybe I did copy down the wrong question. Uh, that's okay. I'll just have to fix it. Hmm. All right. So I apologize, but let me change this question here. My, I think my notes are slightly disorganized maybe. So let me uh, fix this question. Let's see, erase all of this. Let me change the matrix that we were given. Yeah, okay, yeah. I see what I did wrong now, okay. <clears throat> All right, so sorry, but let's let's redo the question, but using this as our new matrix. So what we're doing is we're taking this matrix A, we're augmenting it with a vector B. And then we're just gonna do elimination to start trying to solve the equation AX equals B. So let's do the elimination first. So here, that'll be four, two plus six is eight, three, B three minus two B one. So B five, 10, Uh, negative two, B4 minus B1, okay. 
So next we move on to our second pivot and we eliminate everything underneath it. So we'll do row three minus four, row two. Row four minus five, row two. Here we'll do eight minus eight is zero. Three minus four is negative one. We have row three minus four, row two. So we will get that there. Uh, when we do row four minus five, row two, we'll get 10 minus 10, which is zero. Negative two minus five is negative seven. And then uh, this minus five B2. Okay. And then, uh, so after that, our next pivot is going to be the negative one over here. So we could use the negative one to eliminate the negative seven. So let's do row four minus seven of row three. That would give us negative seven plus seven. So it gets us a row zeros, okay? And uh, we'd also have this minus seven times all of that there. And I'm gonna copy that down, I'll write it as it is. So that in row four minus seven of what we had here in row three. And then the the remaining three columns are uh, as they were over here, okay? So I'm not gonna write them down just to save some time. But what's different in this example is that we got a row of zeros, which uh, did not happen in the previous example, okay? Okay. So this time, uh, when we look at this last row where we had a row of zeros on the left, this last equation gives us like 0x1 zero plus 0x2 zero plus 0x3 zero plus 0x4 zero equal to all of this that we had on the right hand side. Okay. And so we know that this would have no solution uh, if the right-hand side were not zero. Okay. So for there to be a solution, to the equation ax equals b, for there to be a solution, we need this expression to be equal to zero uh, as well. So that way you'd have zero equals zero and it would still be consistent, okay? So we need this expression to be equal to zero for the equation ax equals b to have a solution. So then this here would be a condition on vector B. Uh, so that uh, AX equals B has a solution. And which we've talked about uh, this in this review. Uh, to say that AX equals B has a solution, that's equivalent to saying that B is in the column space of A. Okay. So this is the condition that the question is asking about, a condition on vector B, so that B is in the column space of A, okay? So we need the components of vector B to satisfy this equation in particular. Okay. All right. 
All right, so then for the remainder of this review, I want to move on to another new topic. So I'm going to talk about basis and dimension, and uh, we'll see how far I can get with that. So let's say we have a vector space V. And then let's say we have some vectors V1 to Vk. So these are vectors in the vector space V. So we see that these vectors v1 to vk. Uh, let's say that these vectors will form a basis for v if they span the space v. And uh, also, if they are linearly independent, OK? So a basis is a set of vectors that both spans the whole space uh, and is also linearly independent, OK? So roughly speaking, basis is both span and linear independence together. Okay. <clears throat> Two conditions, uh, spanning the space and being linearly independent. So remember to say that the vectors span the space V. That means that every vector in V is a linear combination of the given vectors V1 through Vk. So in other words, for uh, any vector B, and V, the equation C1 V1 plus C2 V2, et cetera, plus CK VK equals B uh, has a solution. Because for uh, to say that this equation has a solution uh, was the same as saying that B is a linear combination of the vectors B1 through Vk. And maybe to be clear, what you're solving for in the equation are the scalars, the coefficients, to see if uh, it is possible or not to express B as a linear combination of the given vectors B1 through Vk. So this here is kind of a, trying to write out more explicitly what it means for the vectors to span the space B. And then um, for linear independence, we haven't talked about that in a while. So let's recall what the definition of linear independence was. So there are a couple of ways you could phrase it, but the way that I think maybe makes the most sense is uh, to be linearly independent means that the only solution to the equation C1, V1, plus et cetera, plus CK, VK equals zero. Okay. So the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution 
where all of the coefficients were equal to zero. Okay. All right, so the basis is a set of vectors that spans the space and is also linearly independent. And it's uh, very, try to briefly go over again what it means to span and what it means to be linearly independent here. Let's try to do some examples. So let's take vectors 1, 0, minus 1, 1. 0, 1, 2, negative 3. 1, 1, 0, 2. 3, 2, 0, 1. So these are vectors in R4. And the uh, question is, do these four vectors form a basis for the vector space R4? And maybe for convenience, let me label these vectors as v1, v2, v3, v4. Okay. So it's asking if these four vectors are a basis for R4. So to check if they form a basis, we want to check if they are linearly independent, and we want to check if they span uh, all of R4. Okay. So let's check for span first. Okay. Okay. So remember uh, what span is. We're checking to see if any vector in R4 is a linear combination of these four vectors. So here, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a linear combination of vectors v1 through v4. I'm setting it equal to an arbitrary vector in R4, so I'm using variables for that. And I want to check if it's possible to uh, sort of scalars um, so that b will be a linear combination of these four vectors, OK? Mm -hmm. All right, so to see that B is a linear combination of these four vectors, uh, that's the same as uh, asking if B is in the column space of this matrix here. And let's check if B is in the column space of this matrix. We just want to check if there is a solution. Uh, to the equation ax equals b. So again, we want to set up the augmented matrix here and try to do some elimination and try to solve for uh, x1, x2, x3, x4. So let's do some elimination. Let's do row 3 plus row 1. And let's do row 4 minus row 1. I'm just doing the row operations right now. Okay. 
right? And then next, uh, we'd want to eliminate these two. So let's maybe do row three minus two, row two, and row four plus three, row two. Okay, and then doing row four plus three of row two. Okay. And then next we'd want to eliminate uh, this four using our next pivot over here. So if we do a uh, row four plus four of row three, that will leave us with a row of zeros at the bottom. And we're gonna get some expression over here. Row four plus four of row three. And so here uh, we see that uh, there will not always be a solution to this equation. So the equation is not always solvable. So in fact, it's only solvable when this right hand side is equal to zero. Uh, then the equation would still be consistent, but this is not zero. You'd have zero equals something non-zero, and therefore there would be no solution. Okay, so because this equation is not always solvable, what's kind of the takeaway? So I guess the takeaway would be that uh, since this equation is not always solvable, that means uh, not every vector B is in the span of these four vectors. So in other words, these four vectors do not span all of R4, okay? So to be a basis, they had to both span and also be linearly independent. Since they do not span R4, we can already conclude that they are not gonna form a basis for R4 then, okay? All right. So we don't have to check linear independence because we already see that they don't span. So they're already not a basis for R4 because of that. Let's look at another example. Now here, this definition applies to any vector space. So it doesn't have to be Rn. It could be a vector space of matrices or a vector space of polynomials, any vector space. So let's do an example outside of Rn. Okay. So let's consider the vector space V consisting of the space of all two by two symmetric matrices. So 
So here I'm going to create uh, three two by two symmetric matrices. So these are three vectors in this vector space. So yeah, if you look at these three matrices that I'm writing here, they are all two by two symmetric. So they are vectors in our vector space of interest right now. Okay. And we want to ask if these three symmetric matrices form a basis for the space of two by two symmetric matrices. So we'll approach this problem kind of the same way. So let's check if the three matrices span V first. Okay. So the way we'll do that is we're going to take an arbitrary two by two symmetric matrix. And we're going to see if we can express it as a linear combination of A1, A2, and A3. Okay. All right, so this is going to lead us to a system of equations. We'll have 1x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 equal to A. Uh, we'll have 1x2, sorry, 1x1 plus 1x2 minus 1x3 equal to B. Here, we're going to get x1 plus x2 minus x3 equal to b. So that third equation was the same as the second one, and that's because our matrices are symmetric. Okay. Uh, we do get one more equation by looking at the last entry, x1 plus x2 plus 0x3 equals c. Okay. So here it leads us to a system of equations. To solve for A, B, and C. Okay, so then if we start doing a little bit of elimination. So row two minus row one, one minus zero is one, two, let's see. Okay. And then here actually, uh, oh, it doesn't matter. I guess you could actually just swap rows and that would uh, do the trick. So let's take these rows and let's swap them. Oh, well, that's silly. I mean, that did not do the trick. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, that was fine, but uh, I guess it would probably just be better instead to, we want to eliminate this one, so let's just do row three minus row two. That would have been better. Okay, and so we get zero, and then row three minus row two. All right, now, 
and then C minus all of that. So it'd be minus B plus A if I simplify. So now this is a reduced to an upper triangular form. Okay. Now at this point, we don't have a row of zeros. So if we were to try to solve for x1, x2, x3, we would be able to back substitute. So starting with the last equation, we could divide both sides by two to solve for x3. And then we can back substitute and solve for x1, x2. So because this system of equations uh, always has a solution, Uh, no matter what a, b, and c are. <clears throat> so that shows us that any two by two symmetric matrix can be expressed as a combination of these three uh, symmetric matrices. So therefore we see that uh, a1, a2, and a3, they at least span the space v right now, okay? So since they span, we kind of want to check linear independence as well then, because to be a basis, they have to both span and also be linearly independent. So for linear independence, uh, if we just recall the definition, linear independence says that the only solution Uh, to this equation, where we have a combination of our given matrices. And for linear independence, we the right-hand side of the equation was zero. So we want to check if the only solution to this equation is where all the x's were equal to zero. Okay, so when you look at how uh, checking for linear independence is set up, so we basically want to solve this equation where the right-hand side is zero. And we want to find if the only solution is all the x's are zero. So notice that this equation here is basically the same as the equation for span, except on the right-hand side, it's all zeros for linear independence. So essentially, we've kind of already done the work up here when we did span. Okay, so if we were to convert this to a system of equations, uh, it would look just like this, except we'd have zeros on the right-hand side. So when we do the elimination, the only thing that would change is that we would have zeros on the right-hand side because A, B, C were all zero. So when we get to this point where Now we do elimination, get it to the upper triangular form, and we get to this. So in this case, uh, the last equation would read as 2x3 equals 0. So therefore, x3 is 0. If x3 is 0, you get x2 is 0. And then if x2 and x3 are 0, you'll also get that x1 is 0. So that was the only solution to this equation. So therefore, uh, these three symmetric matrices are also linearly independent. So because they are linearly independent and because they span our 
vector space B, the conclusion is that uh, they would be a basis Uh, for our vector space B, which was the space of two by two symmetric matrices, okay? So I wanna kind of pause and just look at uh, the examples and just kind of talk about a couple of things. So whether you're checking span or linear independence, okay. uh, regardless of if you are working with matrices or maybe you are working with polynomials or maybe you were just working in some Rn, like how here we were working in R4 in this example. So regardless of the case, uh, Checking for span and independence will lead you to a system of equations. Okay. So checking for span uh, led us to uh, the system of equations. So it leads us to an equation of the form like AX equals B for some matrix A determined by like the vectors or the matrices that were given or whatever. So this was like the matrix A uh, for this example, which came from our three symmetric matrices that were given. So checking for span leads to this kind of equation checking for linear independence uh, leads to uh, an equation AX equals zero. Because for linear independence in the definition, the right-hand side of this equation that you need to solve is zero. So that's why it's zero on the right-hand side when you're checking for a linear independence. Uh, and as I kind of noted, um, we had the same matrix A on the left for like uh, both span and linear independence. Because again, these, this matrix A just comes from the vectors that were given, if you will, okay? <clears throat> And just want to kind of quickly highlight, like, how do you know if the given vectors or whatever span your space? How do you know if they're linearly independent? So to span, okay. in this example, they did not span essentially because you got that row of zeros, which meant that the equation was not always solvable. Here, we did not get a row zero, so the equation was always solvable, and that's why they spanned the space. So to span, that means A will not have any rows of zeros when you row reduce. And then uh, to be linearly independent, okay. <clears throat> okay, so to be linearly independent, the only solution to this equation is where all the uh, axes are zero. Uh, but a way that you can kind of figure it out just from the matrix A itself, so here we're saying that there's going to be a unique solution, only one solution. And we know that uh, 
To have a unique solution, that means you can't have any free variables. And each free variable comes from having a pivot without, or sorry, having a column without a pivot. So to have no free variables would mean that every column of A would have to have a pivot. So when you're checking for a linear independence, this matrix A that you end up with uh, in your example would have to have a pivot in every column to be independent. Because if you have a pivot in every column, you have no free variables, therefore there will be a unique solution. Okay. All right, so linear independence, every column has to have a pivot for span. When we said that there are no rows of zeros, another way you can think about that would be to say that every row has a pivot. Because if every row has a pivot, then you're not going to have any rows of zeros then. Okay. So in order to have a basis, uh, every row of A has to have a pivot and every column of A has to have a pivot as well. Okay. So in other words, basically, your matrix will have to be square. So to be a basis, every row and every column must have a pivot. So the only way that this is possible Uh, is for A to be a square. And it must have a full set of pivots. Maybe I'll just say it must have no missing pivots. Okay. All right. Uh, so, now to be clear though, um, this matrix A, you have to kind of maybe work out a little what the matrix A is based off the vectors or the matrices or the polynomials that were given in your problem. But once you uh, determine what the matrix A is, okay, uh, then uh, it's just checking if uh, it is square and it must have uh, no missing pivots or must have a full set of pivots, okay? So I've gone on a little long for this review and I still definitely didn't touch on everything that I wanted to touch on, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and end it here.